Hello, beautiful souls. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. My name is Carolyn. This channel is all about true crime, mystery, and anything abnormal. I highly recommend subscribing because this channel is definitely a vibe. I just want to say thank you so much to my returning subscribers. You guys are absolutely amazing. I love that you're watching the video, subscribing, liking, commenting, sharing the video, all of that wonderful stuff. I really, really appreciate it. And if you're new here, I hope that you enjoy the video. Today's story is about the disappearance of Sean Hornback and Ben Ownby. Sean Hornbeck was an 11 year old boy who was very sweet and loving with his family and friends. And he really enjoyed video games and baseball. So your typical 11 year old boy. On October 6, 2002, Sean Hornbeck got on his lime green bicycle headed for his friend's house. This was a ride he had made many times. He lived in a safe area and his parents trusted him to bike from his house to his friend's house, which was not too far away. This was a ride he had done probably hundreds of times. Sean lived in a small town, Richwoods, Missouri, just outside of St. Louis. So Sean went outside, got on his bike and started heading to his friend's house. Not long into his trip, he was biking down the road and a white truck bumped into him and he, the truck hit him and it was enough to knock him off his bike, but it wasn't a very serious accident. So the man in the truck got out of the truck and Sean is assuming this man is coming to make sure he's okay because he's just hit Sean with his truck, but Sean was wrong. The man driving the truck was Michael Devlin and he did not hit Sean by mistake. He hit Sean with his truck purposely because he was there to abduct Sean. Within a split second, Michael Devlin had picked up Sean, threw him in the truck, and all he said to Sean was, you were in the wrong place at the wrong time. This would begin four years of absolute horror for Sean Hornbeck. Devlin took Sean back to his apartment where he lived. It was less than an hour away from where Sean's parents lived. And he chained him to a bed and abused him physically. He essayed him. He did absolutely horrific things to this young boy. Devlin also told Sean that if he ever tried to escape, Devlin would kill him and his family. And the thought of this terrified young Sean. Sean lived every day in terror. He was being abused every single day by this horrible man. And he did not see a way that he would ever be able to escape because he really believed the threat that Devlin would kill him or his family. So it got to the point where Sean really wished that he was dead instead of living this daily abuse that he was suffering at the hands of this complete monster. Sean's days and months all kind of mushed together. Sometimes he would think it was summer and then he would have the opportunity to look out the window and he would see snow. So he really had no concept of what day it was, how long he had been there. He was just locked up, chained to a bed 24 seven and he just saw no way out. At one point, Sean had attempted to escape. When he did this, Devlin took Sean, put him in his truck, drove him out into the middle of nowhere, and Devlin had a gun with him, and Sean really believed that this was it, that Devlin was going to kill him. Sean begged Devlin not to kill him, and he told him, I will follow every single rule you have, I will do absolutely everything that you say, and this, to Devlin, changed his mind and he thought, okay, if I can have this kid who will abide by all of my insane abusive rules, well, maybe I'll keep him alive. So he put Sean back in the truck and they went home. From this point forward, 
Sean followed every single one of Devlin's rules. He did exactly what he was told and he never ever wavered from that. Sean had just accepted that this was his fate and this was going to be the rest of his life and he would never question Devlin again and he would never go against what he was told to do or not do. Michael Devlin started to trust Sean because Sean was so obedient. He actually would let Sean go outside in the apartment complex that they lived. Sean ended up making some friends and he was allowed to go out and do some things. And even at one point, Sean was allowed to use a cell phone. And later, a lot of people would question, why didn't Sean run away? And I just think we're talking about an 11 year old child who is literally living a life or death situation every minute of every day. So when people are questioning him later on, because he does get rescued, I just think it's horrific that they question why he didn't run away. He was a child who was terrified and all he was doing was trying to stay alive. After Sean's disappearance, Pam and Craig, who are Sean's parents, did absolutely everything that they could do to find Sean. They spent all of their life savings. They would go and do media interviews. They were just trying to keep Sean's story in the headlines because they desperately wanted their son back. And they actually ended up starting a foundation called the Sean Hornback Foundation, which not only was used to try to help Sean, but it also would try to help other families who had lost children who had either disappeared or were missing. And this part of the story, I don't know. Let me tell you, and you tell me what you think. Tell me in the comments below what you think of this. At one point, Sean was at a friend's house and he's at the friend's house and they're watching television and the friend, along with the friend's parents, see Sean Hornback's picture on the television talking about Sean being missing. And Sean was only, he was only gone four years. So the picture of him from when he went missing to the picture of him when he gets rescued, he doesn't look that different. And the parents immediately when they see him on TV, they're like, uh, Sean, that's you. And Sean denies it, denies it and says it's not him. But I would think he's going by the name Sean and he looks exactly like him because it is him. But that those parents, they never contacted the police. When Sean said it wasn't him, they just believed him. And I just think as an adult, if you have a child telling you, no, that's not me, but you can clearly look at the picture on the television, look at the child that is sitting next to you. I, I don't know how they never contacted the police, but for some reason, this family sees this on the news, believes that it's Sean and Sean is able to convince them that it's not him. So part of the Sean Hornbeck Foundation, they had a website where people could comment or they could leave tips. They could basically write anything that they wanted. And one day a message came on the message board of the foundation that said, how long are you going to look for your son? Now, this message didn't raise any concerns really to anyone because they received messages like this all the time but the person who left that message was actually Sean this was his way of reaching out to his parents and I'm sure he was wondering how long would they keep looking for him and it's really sad because obviously once he's rescued, he his parents find out that he had left this message. There's no way that they could have known that it was from him. But he was trying in his way 
to reach out, but he was too afraid to actually really reach out and tell someone that he was him. After four years, Sean was now 15. And this presented a problem for Michael Devlin because Michael Devlin was a pedo. And obviously we know that those monsters have age preferences. And Sean was getting too old for his liking. One day Devlin told Sean he was going to abduct another boy. And Sean begged him. He begged him and begged him and begged him not to take another boy. He offered to do anything that Devlin wanted. He just really did not want another boy to go through what he had gone through. He felt like he'd already gone through it. He was living it and he just really didn't want another kid to experience the horror that he had. Unfortunately, Devlin, the monster that he was, wanted a boy much younger. On January 8th, 2017, 13-year-old Ben Ownby, who looked much younger than his actual age, got off the school bus. And when he got off the school bus, he got off with another boy. The other boy that got off the bus with him was older than Ben and he actually had his license. So what this boy would do is he would take the bus home from school, his car would be parked at the bus stop and then he would drive home from there. When the two boys got off the bus, Ben started heading one way and the other boy started heading the other way and Devlin was laying in wait. When Devlin saw his opportunity, he grabbed 13 year old Ben threw him in his white Nissan pickup truck and sped away. The other boy, whose name was Mitchell, he was obsessed with trucks and cars. So he turned out to be the perfect witness because when he obviously witnesses the abduction and, you know, goes home, they contact the police, but he's able to give such a specific detail of the car. This kid was obsessed with trucks. He knew everything about them. He could tell them every detail. He was able to even tell them there was a rust spot in, you know, this area of the car and there was a little bit of rust in this area of the car. Like it, the description was just absolutely amazing and it would end up saving both boys. The FBI obviously follow up on the tip from Mitchell and it leads them to a pizzeria in Kirkwood where Devlin is a store manager. When they arrived, they knew that Michael Devlin was the one who owned the truck. So the FBI asked him if they could search his truck and Michael said yes. So they searched his truck. And while they did that, they put Michael in the back of a car with an FBI agent and the FBI agent started asking Michael questions. So the FBI agent is looking for Ben and he keeps asking Michael Devlin about Ben. Has he seen Ben? His car was seen near the abduction site. He's asking him all these questions about Ben. But Michael Devlin keeps talking about his godson named Sean. And at this point, the FBI has no idea that the two cases are linked. Eventually, after talking for quite a while, Michael confesses. He confesses that, yes, he is the one who abducted Ben. And he also tells them, I'm also the man who four years ago abducted Sean Hornback. And the FBI agents are floored because they had no idea, as I've mentioned, that the two cases were connected. The FBI agents get Devlin to take them to his apartment. So they get to Devlin's apartment. Devlin opens the door and the FBI open the door and go in. And inside are Ben and Sean sitting on a couch playing video games. They had just found not just Ben, but Sean. 
That night, the sheriff went on the news to announce that both boys were alive and they had both been found. Prosecutors charged Devlin with many charges, including kidnapping, use of a deadly weapon, essaying a minor, and production of child P. And he was obviously being held without bail. And something that I just thought was so sweet in this story is the boy who had witnessed Ben's abduction and was able to give the FBI such a detailed description of the truck, they actually gave him an award and they also gave him a brand new pickup truck, which was so exciting to him. And I just think it was really sweet that this boy who had saved two boys was rewarded and uh, congratulated so much. So I thought that was really a sweet thing that they did uh, for the witness. When Sean was interviewed afterwards, he told them that the whole time that he was there, he was forced to pose as Devlin's son. And he actually told them that there had been several occasions where he had been questioned by the police. He had been hanging out with friends and I guess they saw a bunch of teenagers and, you know, police wanted to know what they were doing. Um, but police several times had actually spoke directly to Sean and he gave the name Sean Devlin. So he was using his real first name, but he was giving the last name Devlin posing as Devlin's son. And it's just sad that no police officer was, I guess, aware enough or had it in his mind to even be looking for Sean. But um, in the end, he did, he did get rescued. So that's obviously the most important part. Devlin pled guilty to all charges. He was sentenced to 74 life sentences plus two, no, 2,020 years on top of the 74 life sentences. And he won't be eligible per, for parole until he is 100. And while Devlin was in prison, he got a little prison justice as well. In April 2011, Devlin was attacked by another inmate who had made a makeshift ice pick. And when asked why he had attacked Devlin, Devlin didn't die. He just injured him severely. But when asked why he attacked Devlin, he said that his crimes were just so horrific that he deserved what he got. And I'm not mad about it. And both Sean and Ben have gone on and they're both living really great lives. They both wanted their privacy, obviously, after they were rescued. So we don't know a lot about their lives and it's it's really none of our business. I do know that Sean ended up getting married and becoming a father and they do both live still in the St. Louis area. And I just really hope that they're both living amazing lives and they're very happy and enjoying every minute of every day because they definitely deserve it. So that was the amazing survival story of Sean Hornbeck and Ben Ownby. If you enjoyed the video, give it a like. If you'd like to see more from me, please subscribe and I will see you in the next one.